Oh iya, yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Balik lagi bareng saya Nurdin Herodin dan pada video kali ini kita akan bahas satu teknik. Ini saya nemu satu teknik dia dari seorang advertiser ya di luar. Namanya Ben Hut. Pokoknya tulisannya Ben Hat H ya. Jadi dia menemukan satu teknik yang cocok menurut dia dan mungkin kita juga bisa mencobanya sebetulnya ya. Jadi dia menjelaskan pokoknya ini hal baru juga yang patut untuk dicoba karena yang namanya Facebook Ads kan sebetulnya cara untuk mengulik ad yang cocok dengan ritme kita sendiri tapi nanti mungkin ada beberapa yang saya skip ya karena banyak banget dia parkirnya jadi kita ke intinya seperti apa nah kira-kira seperti ini have you ever felt like there's got to be a better way to promote my stuff you know a way to get way more people excited and interested in what you have to offer well guess what you were right there's definitely a better way and i'm here to show you how to make it happen so there's this secret facebook ad strategy that i haven't seen anyone talk about which when used correctly can supercharge all of your facebook ad results nah jadi begini Tadi openingnya dia bilang bahwa dia menemukan satu teknik yang sangat efektif di Facebook Ads khususnya 2023 ini dan dia memberikan result yang bagus. Nah, gitu dah. Ya. Kemudian kita juga bisa menggunakan teknik ini katanya. Results. And this isn't just a fairy tale theory without any real results. This is a genuine ad campaign that I've used for years and it's helped me turn my personal brand into a multi seven figure a year business. It helped me grow my Facebook group, my marketing agency, my email list, even my YouTube channel. It's called the omnipresent content strategy and it's about to turn everything you know about. Ya intinya dia sudah menggunakan teknik ini juga ternyata bukan hanya sekarang tapi juga sudah hampir tahun. Nah saya coba langsung masuk ke intinya ya. I could select website visitors. I could go ahead and grab Instagram followers. If you've got other ones set up like Facebook page engagers and we've got video viewers in there and you just want to go ahead and add in all the warm audiences that you've got in here. Not lookalikes, lookalikes are cold audiences, but all your custom audiences in here. Then absolutely make sure that you deselect advantage custom audience. If we are targeting Oke okay guys, jadi uh, dia menggunakan targeting yang ada, dia sebut sih ada warm audience, ada cold audience. Nah, dia nggak pernah menggunakan look like, karena look like itu dia cold. Nah, dia menggunakan audience yang warm gitu ya, atau hangat. Nah, dia berdasarkan dari yang berinteraksi dengan halaman, lalu kemudian yang kedua dari Instagram, dan juga selanjutnya yang visit ke website. Nah, dia juga tidak mengaktifkan advantage custom audience. Jadi dihilangin, guys. Nah, ini poin yang pertama. Tapi ini kalau misalkan kalian mau menarget orang-orang yang berada di warm audience, katanya begitu. Karena itu sebetulnya begini, kalau warm audience yang langsung custom audience not look like gitu yang bukan look like itu pasti audience volumenya itu kecil ya. Tapi kita akan lanjutkan warm audiences who have interacted with our business before we do not want meta to just expand that and put our ads in front of cold people as well that doesn't make any sense don't know why that's default on but it is make sure you deselect it okay now if you don't have warm audiences that's absolutely fine you can still use this strategy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to walk you through the process of what you would do for each scenario if you do have warm audiences versus if you don't in order to work out if we can use warm audiences for our omnipresent content campaign you have to it's all based on audience size how big are your warm audiences so what we're looking for in terms of audience size is 50,000 to 100,000 people if you have warm audiences that can make up that number fantastic let's go with warm audiences to open don't add in any detailed targeting options and just go that to people living in this location particularly if you're advertising somewhere that generates a lot of tourists you don't want to be advertising to people that aren't actually in the place where you can deliver and i'll demonstrate that because that's really important so i live in a town called cheltenham for example and if we just had a local business you know service-based business for example that requires in-person interaction then we would go with something like cheltenham 25 miles might be too much we could narrow that down to say something like 50 ah. Jadi untuk placementnya itu yang pertama yang seperti kan adalah pastikan lokasinya yang tinggal di lokasi itu. Makanya dia pilih lokasi ini nih. Jadi kemudian yang kedua dia langsung menarget wilayah dengan eh, kota mana yang ingin disasar. Ya. Dan kemudian radiusnya dikurangin. In maybe that's our area of operations. Now, as I mentioned, you want to keep an eye on this audience size over here. 
And this is, you're going to get better data if you are going down the cold audience targeting option. Because how big this is once you've added in your location targeting criteria is going to affect the rest of your settings. Remember, we're aiming for that of what we provide as a service, then we would probably set, okay, then we get down to detailed targeting and we would want to add in an interest to 102,000. So that's business, right? So you find you can set it up. Differences between where you advertise, how many people are in that audience, um, all those sorts of criteria, and that's going to affect things. But what you're really aiming for, your sort of North Star, is this estimated audience size of 50,000 to 100,000. Ideally, you do it with warm audiences, but I appreciate some of you will not be able to do that yet, and that's absolutely fine. You can set it up kind of like this. Okay, so now that our audience is set up, let's scroll down to the placement okay. section. Now yeah, jadi selanjutnya dia uh, mengedit usia. Nah, itu biasa ya, usianya ditentukan sesuai dengan targetnya. Lalu kemudian dia, dia juga memasukkan di demografi interest itu dia menggunakan marketing. Sebenarnya di sini bukan berarti kita harus menggunakan interest marketing, tapi dia mungkin sesuai produknya target orang lain yang tertarik dengan dunia marketing. Nah, teman-teman cari aja interest yang sesuai dengan produk teman-teman dan masukkan satu aja, dia nggak banyak, ya. Lalu kemudian selanjutnya masuk ke placement. Ya. Now you see that the default is advantage plus placements. That basically means everywhere, everywhere on Facebook, everywhere on Instagram, everywhere on Messenger, audience network. That is absolutely not what you want to go with with omnipresent content. We're using the reach objective. We want to reach as many people as possible. If you leave this selected, Meta will work out that they can get you really cheap reach on the lower quality placement options. Therefore, that's where your ads will show up. You absolutely want to make sure that you only select the higher quality placements. So you want to go ahead and select manual placements, um, get rid of audience network. And what we want to do is only target feeds stories and reels so go ahead and delete out everything else in here and that's going to be your highest quality placement sense. nah untuk platformnya jadi placementnya dia memilih manual placement guys tapi kalau misalnya kalian ingin seluruhnya dijangkau bisa menggunakan yang otomatis atau advantage nah dia pilih manual kemudian dia nggak mengaktifkan di bagian audience network messenger ya artikel in stream dan uh, mana lagi tadi ya intinya di bagian sebelah situnya dia nggak aktifin ya Gitu. Tapi di beranda itu wajib semuanya mau Instagram mau Facebook itu dimasukin. Kita masuk ke bagian placement. Facebook feeds, Instagram feeds, um, stories on both platforms, reels on both platforms as well. That's really, really important. If you're going with a more conversion based campaign like sales, leads, something like that, you can go with Advantage Plus because Meta is only going to put your ads in places where they are likely to convert. So you see why the campaign objective matters so much, but that's not what we're looking to do with this Um, campaign type this strategy. Nah, tapi kalau misalkan kalian menggunakan objective sales maka direkomendasikan mengaktifkan advantage karena nanti si Facebook akan menaruh di tempat-tempat yang akan menghasilkan konversi. <laughs> Itu ya. We've got that ad set set up. Now before we go any further and go into the ad level, what I want you to do is minimize this down, uh, select this ad set and then duplicate it, duplicate into the original campaign and then create 11 copies. And what we're doing here is we're creating a total of 12 ad sets within this campaign, which I know sounds... Langkah selanjutnya setelah placement itu dia kemudian membuat 12 ad set. Artinya kan tadi kita sudah bikin satu ad set gitu ya. Lalu kemudian dia menduplikat 11 ad set. Nah, jadi ad set itu setelah campaign ya. Jadi kan campaign ad set ads. Jadi set iklan itu tempat setting-setting targetnya lah. Si ad set diduplikat 11 menjadi 12, artinya komposisinya 1, 12, 1, ya. Jadi satu campaign, 12 ad set, setiap ad set ada satu, berarti ada 12 ads, gitu ya. Nah ini nih strateginya nih. It's crazy, you'd never do that with another campaign structure, that's too many. But with this it works really well, and you'll see why in a minute. And then within each one of these ad sets, we've got one individual ad. 12 ad sets, 12 ads. Again, very different. Norm Normally we would have say three to five different ad sets and then within each ad set we might have three or four different ads a completely different structure with omnipresent content strategy now i need to explain how this works and why we are structuring it this way so the idea behind omnipresent content is not to generate a quick sale it's not to say look at this shiny new thing i've got go ahead and buy it now please it's instead to build a brand it's designed to develop a relationship what we want to do is make your business 
the only one that your prospect wants to buy from when it comes to whatever it is that you offer. Wow. If you think about how you interact, Nah, jadi strategi ini adalah strategi yang digunakan untuk membuat si bisnis yang kita miliki itu adalah menjadi pilihan satu-satunya yang audiens lihat. Gitu ya. Karena setiap hari mereka akan melihat dengan konten yang berbeda. Design to do. So, we've got our ad sets. Let's select them all. Click edit. We're going to scroll down to this part here under bid control that says show more options. Now, we've got a frequency cap in here. The default is one impression every seven days. I want you to go ahead and change that to one impression. Nah, lalu kemudian langkah selanjutnya adalah kita mengubah ad set dari frekuensinya ya, impression-nya itu dengan 6, bukan 7. Kan biasanya default itu 7 hari. Jadi satu impresi setiap 7 hari kan begitu ya. Nah, di sini di edit semuanya 12 12-nya di edit itu satu impresi itu setiap 6 hari gitu ya. Jadi di sini bukan 7 hari lagi. Nah, jadi kita rubah di bagian ininya. Impression every 6 days. And here's why. If we've got 12 ad sets and an ad within each ad set can only be shown to people within your audience once every 6 days, that means that on average a person is going to see an ad from two ad sets every day. Nah, jadi alasannya dia kenapa 6? Jadi setiap 6 hari itu hanya satu set iklan yang bisa dilihat audiens. Jadi kalau misalkan punya 12 gitu ya, artinya setiap hari ada dua set iklan, ada dua iklan yang dilihat oleh audiens. Jadi selama sepekan tuh dia dapat terus 2 2 2 2 2 2 gitu ya, sehingga orang lain itu tidak punya kesempatan. Yang dilihat tuh kita gitu ya. Begitu. On a rolling basis. But they're only seeing them once every 6 days. So, to help explain Let's say you've got ad set A and ad set B are shown on Monday. Ad set C and ad set D are shown on Tuesday. Ad set E and ad set F are shown on Wednesday. Carry it on, and then you repeat. Once you've gone six days through, you get ad set A and B again. This. Nah, jadi Senin dia ad set A dan B, Selasa C dan D, gitu ya. Rabu E dan F, dan selanjutnya selama enam hari. Jadi ini strategi ini menguasai ini ya uh, Facebook. <laughs> frequency stat cap stops ads in ad set A from being shown Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It can only be once every six days. Now, of course, it's not going to be quite as neat as that. Some days they're going to see more than two of the ad sets and some days they're going to see less. It's not a perfect sort of two and two and two, but it's pretty close. It works pretty well. And the idea behind that is that we want to show up in feed stories, etc., for our prospects every day, ideally twice a day. <laughs> Jadi dia bilang setiap hari itu yang dia kita aja gitu, gak sedikit buka Facebook kita lagi, kita lagi, kita lagi, kita lagi gitu ya. Karena kan ada pepatah yang bilang kalau kita ya produk sejenis apapun kalau terus diliatin gitu ya, itu pasti jadi menarik gitu ya. Jadi sejelek apapun orang kalau terus dipublikasi itu menjadi e, menarik. Nah prinsipnya begitu. Dan dia ini tadi kan videonya lihat ke kanan si supir itu wah kamu lagi, lihat di belakang penumpang kamu lagi gitu ya and we're going to do it with different pieces of content. That's where we've got the ad structure, ad set structure, because each one of these ads within these 12 ad sets is going to flex, but you can really annoy them if it's just the same ad again and again and again, and they get bored. It's like, instead of showing up in all people, and I'm not going to show you the, each individual ad in terms of setting up, you know, like writing the ad copy and imagery and things like that. I've got other videos you can find on my channel with more information on ad creation. What I want you to talk, talk you through is the structure here and the strategy in terms of what type of ad. So we've got 12 ads and there's four different categories of ads. Nah, mungkin teman-teman berpikir ya, ini kalau misalkan iklannya sama, itu kan bosen. Nah, kemudian dia membuat empat kategori jenis iklannya. Jadi setiap empat set iklan itu empat jenis. Kemudian empat set iklan selanjutnya itu empat lagi, gitu ya. Dan nanti e, akan disampaikan ini, ini, ini penting nih buat teman-teman. Jadi jangan sampai teman-teman lupa di bagian ini ya. Jadi ada empat kategori yang dia e, gunakan untuk 12 set iklan. The first one is value. Value is exactly what. Nah, jadi jenis konten yang pertama itu adalah jenis uh, konten yang menunjukkan value produk. Ya. Jadi value produk seperti apa? Itu menjadi empat 
jenis tapi di sini sih saya lihat would expect it to be it's pieces of content that help your prospects achieve something they want to achieve or avoid something they want to avoid so my content for example is value content it's showing you how to get better results for facebook and instagram ads or how to avoid the fact we might have three different value ads okay we might have value add one which is a video and these could be a different formats by the way okay it doesn't have to be all just video for example jadi di sini ads yang pertama itu value ad satu video jadi yang kedua dia yang value ad dua jadi sebetulnya dari kategori value gitu ya itu membuat empat video yang berbeda ya jadi empat jenis yang berbeda artinya kalau misalkan ada 12 berarti empat berbeda berarti 12 12 yang berbeda hanya menjadi empat kategori gitu kurang lebih ya jadi yang pertama value although I do like to use video quite a lot we could have value um, add to if I can spell and talk at the same time we could have value add to and perhaps that's another video but a different one okay the next category of ad that we want to create is demonstration okay yang kedua kategorinya ads nya tadi kan empat udah ya value nah empat yang kedua itu adalah demonstration atau mungkin tutorial lah kali ya So demonstration is going to be things that demonstrate how your product or service works. Now this is a really important component of Nah, ini juga demonstration ad itu berbeda. Jadi empat bikin empat berbeda. Nah, ya kita langsung masuk ke yang jenis yang ketiga. Testimonial obviously a great thing to do would be um, videos from previous clients, but you can also use imagery of like a nice quote. You could use um, even just a text post we've used in the yang kategori selanjutnya itu adalah testimoni, guys. Ad, and this is call to action. So you're delivering value, you're helping people out, you're showing them how your product service works, you're demonstrating to them that other people just like them have had great results. Now you need to ask them to take a specific action. So here's where you um, would say things like sign up. For jadi empat kategori, jadi dibikin tiga tiga. Jadi value tiga, demonstration tutorial tiga. Testimoni tiga dan yang terakhir adalah call to action yang dia langsung mengarahkan untuk uh, apa sih maksud tujuan dari iklan kita. Jadi ada empat kategori dengan masing-masing tiga. Sananya informasinya hanya sekedar uh, ucap-ucap ya. Oke okay guys, jadi itu strategi yang dia temukan dan ini bisa kita coba juga. Jadi dia membuat 12 dengan impresi everyday itu 6 ya satu impresinya every enam hari. Jadi artinya selama sehari itu ada dua, dua ads yang berbeda ya. Tadi ads-nya dibagi menjadi beberapa kategori dengan minimal itu tiga, tiga, tiga ya. Teman-teman sudah melihat dan ini patut dicoba silahkan teman-teman. Oke okay, teman-teman itu saja mungkin mudah-mudahan bermanfaat. Sampai jumpa di next video kalau ada pertanyaan ataupun apapun tulis di kolom komentar.